Hey guys, I'm Allison. I'm the Pampered Wife. Today I want to talk about skincare. Oh my gosh, skincare. Today I want to talk about sunscreen. I've been meaning to do this video for a while. I have some clips of me applying the sunscreen and then I show what the finish is like and then I put the same makeup on for every sunscreen and show what that looks like. I did change eyeshadow for the two tinted products I'm going to talk about. There are four SPFs, two untinted, two tinted. I'm going to talk about the product itself, the price, the SPF amount, what the packaging is like, whether or not there's fragrance, the skincare or ingredient claims, who I think it's good for, what the texture is like, and finally the finish. So obviously this part is filmed at a different time on a different day and what happened is I had filmed this video, had my four comparisons ready, two untinted sunscreens were to be included. Unfortunately one of those sunscreens was Purito Comfy Water Sunblock and while that particular sunscreen was not called out for being improperly labeled, other of Purito's sunscreens were or another one was and they've pulled all of their sunscreens, so that one is not available. Obviously don't wanna include something that makes false claims and is not available. So instead I've included another lightly tinted product and I'm going to insert a the video of me reviewing that one. So my apologies, but I wanted to share sunscreen information with you. If you enjoy this video at all, please give it a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. I do this for myself because I just love skincare and makeup and clean beauty in general. I'd love some feedback, even a thumbs down if you don't like it, I'd appreciate that or comment something. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. All of the sunscreen I'm talking about today are mineral sunscreens, they're zinc oxide, they are non-nano or they contain non-nano particles, they're all reef safe, they're vegan, cruelty free, none of them are water resistant. So you definitely need to reapply these or another sunscreen on top of it every two hours if you're gonna be in the sun. I did put all of these on my eyelids and all the way up under my eyes and had no problem with burning or stinging. That's gonna be a personal thing. For untinted sunscreens, we have 11 Unrivaled Sun Serum, which is Venus Williams' brand, <laughs> the tennis player, in case you're not familiar with her somehow. This one is $50 and is an SPF of 35. This was created in conjunction with a reputable Canadian sunscreen brand. It's called the Sunscreen Company. <laughs> it is in a glass container. The bottom portion is glass, opaque. The top is plastic. It is a dropper system. And it has this unique type of packaging where when you close it all the way, the top part gets sucked into the bottle. When you open it, the top part pushes out. And to get the product into the dropper, you push this to release the product as well as to suck some up. It is made from post-consumer recycling when available. There is no fragrance added, however, it does have a scent. I was pleasant, not, I was unpleasantly surprised the first time I used it. It turns out it has prickly pear oil in it and that must be what I'm smelling. It, which to me smells like bad in the beginning and then sort of turns into a vanilla scent and then a maple syrupy scent. It does dissipate quickly. I do not care for the scent. It's off-putting to me. Some people may like it, just be aware of that. They say it's not fragranced, but it does have a scent because of that ingredient. Additional ingredient claims are that the prickly pear hydrates and soothes the skin, and this is also supposed to be a great primer. By the way, this is the serum, the sunscreen serum. There is another product by Eleven. It might be a moisturizer, I'm not sure what it is, but this is the serum. Additional ingredients, it has Saccharomyces ferment, which are a type of fungi or fungi, and that helps with anti-aging. It does also have some sunflower seed oil derivatives and coconut alkanes, which are derived from coconut oil. So in my opinion, this is not good for someone who is sensitive to scents. I guess maybe I'm one of those people. It's not good for someone who's sensitive to coconut oil. It's 
you know, has some hydrating properties, so it's fine for someone with a drier skin. I always moisturize underneath it. Now, as for use and application, you do need to shake this product. There's no little ball in it that you can hear, but it's so liquidy you can you can hear it when you shake it. You use this dropper, which a lot of people have complained about because it doesn't pick up enough product. I have to say, for me it does, but I've heard a lot of complaints. The texture is like water. It might be a little thicker than water. It does have a clay in it as one of the last ingredients to help thicken it. It spreads around well enough. There is a texture to it, so it's not slippery or slick. It's almost like you can feel some of the clay, and I think that's what then gives this velvety finish that you can feel. It's nice, and it spreads easily enough. I think I said that. It has, again, a skin-like finish. So this is the hand I have it on. I don't have it on this one. I think it does not leave any white cast, which I would expect given Venus's well, yes, Venus is deep skin tone, but you never know because it's 100% mineral. So I think that's pretty fabulous that she was able to create this formula. It's not sticky or tacky or greasy. It can be comfortable. And like I said, the finish itself is nice. The only thing is it didn't play well with other products. Sometimes it wore great and other times it pilled. I pretty much use the same products every morning, so I haven't figured out if maybe I didn't let the previous products dry down enough before I I put on the sunscreen or what the case was or what product I went in on top of it with that made it pill so just be aware of that even though they say it's a primer doesn't prime for everything you got to be careful also of note there's a note on their website that says exposure to prolonged heat may cause product to spoil I think that's a significant issue because I typically throw my sunscreen in my beach bag in my purse you know i may sit outside for three hours to watch my son play lacrosse or if i go to the beach it's sitting out in the heat all day and a sunscreen should be able to tolerate heat in my opinion oftentimes i just leave it in my car you can't do that with this product so that is a big concern now i'm going to talk about a lightly tinted spf by josh rosebrook this is the nutrient day cream tinted facial moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30. Now I don't have the full size product of this because I've run out. I do have a sample and that's what I'm using. I have however used a full size of this product so I can absolutely speak knowledgeably and give you some information. This product did receive the 2020 Harper's Bazaar Anti-Aging Award to give you some idea of the popularity and credibility and hoopla around this product. It is $60, so it's definitely the most expensive product. It is SPF 30. Just Rosebrook recently updated the packaging to be glass packaging. It is opaque milky white with a plastic pump on top. You know, we could go back and forth about which is better. Plastic is lighter to ship. Glass is heavier, so maybe that's harder in the environment. However, glass can absolutely be recycled numerous times, but plastic can't. So I don't know if glass packaging is better or worse, but I certainly feel better using glass packaging. I know it's better, at least recycling wise, for the environment, and so that I believe is why Josh Rosebrook wrote, you know what I mean. That's why he changed the packaging. He is very conscious of the environment and everybody he wants to be inclusive. That's just an FYI. <laughs> This product claims to have no fragrance and I can happily report that it actually really has no fragrance. I believe maybe it used to be fragranced, but you know, he changed the formula some when he changed the packaging and I'm so happy to say it's completely fragrance free. I don't smell anything with my crazy sensitive nose where I always smell something even when it's unscented. This product claims to be a moisturizer, an SPF, a primer, and I can tell you I've certainly used it as all of those things. In the morning I go in and I usually use my vitamin C serum and I'll just put this on. So I love that it really does what it claims. I have normal to dry skin. I think I've said that a million times in this video or I will have by the end. <laughs> But that is what it is. It contains lots of beautiful oils and antioxidants like broccoli seed oil. It has grapeseed oil. It also, the first ingredient is aloe vera juice. 
and the next ingredient I believe is shea butter so there is a little bit of thickness to it. This product also claims to minimize redness because it's tinted. Who is this good for? I would say it's good for everyone or at least that's what Josh Rosebrook claims. Probably the only person it's not good for in my opinion as a non-skincare expert is someone with oily skin but someone with dry skin you may want to supplement underneath it with something to moisturize a little more add a little more moisture definitely normal to dry skin combo skin i think it would work for people who have sensitive skin because there's no essential oils in it and no scents of course you'd have to review the ingredients yourself to see if you're sensitive to anything in there the texture is a light moisturizer i saved a little bit of the sample to put on the back of my hand. I would normally use this entire sample, of course, in one use. You can see it's not a liquid at all. It is a cream. It really is a lightweight cream. It's not sticky or slick or greasy in any way. It spreads out nicely. I don't feel any grit. There's no clay in it. It just is smooth and comfortable and light. As for the finish, Josh Rosebrook claims that it is a matte finish. I'll give it a second or a minute to dry down here. I've never found it to be a matte finish. To me, it has a very skin-like finish. You know, it doesn't provide much coverage. It's sheer, you definitely see your skin underneath. So it is just, act, looks like a tinted moisturizer. It doesn't at all act to cover up anything. You can't really use this as a light foundation or anything like that. It is just going to mask some redness and provide a beautiful skin-like finish. When it dries all the way down, it's more of a satin. I'll give it another minute and then hold it up for you. And it's pretty much dried down now, and you can see it's a skin-like finish. It's not matte. Again, this hand. Obviously, if I didn't say that, you should have seen it leaves absolutely no white cast. It's not at all chalky, not opaque or anything. Also, Supposedly the minerals in here, which are zinc oxide, have some ability to transition to match your skin tone. I have no idea if that's true. As I mentioned before, Josh Roseburg is all about inclusivity, so I would imagine it works for most skin types or shades. Chime in below, let us know if you have a deeper skin or pale skin, if this can work for you. I just know it seems to be perfect for me, even though when I first put it on, it looks like it isn't gonna match, but then somehow, you know, it really does a beautiful job. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the Suntegrity 5-in-1 Sunscreen Moisturizer. Suntegrity is a brand that was created by a woman who lost her mother to skin cancer, so it is a personal journey for her to create these products, products that people will actually wear and protect themselves from sun damage. As I said, it's a tinted SPF. It does come in four shades. I would say from medium skin tone to very fair. It does not cater at all to a deeper skin tone. I can only imagine they have to be addressing that issue at this point. I have the shade Light. It's $45 and is an SPF of 30. It does come in this plastic airless pump, which I like. Now, the older packaging was silver, just like the Impeccable Skin, but I believed I believe this is the newer packaging, it's white, and the impeccable skin may still come in the silver, I'm not sure. But it's this airless pump, and you can you know, easily see how much product you have left. Not sure that I have any left. Okay, I got the teeniest bit out. Now the additional claims are that it's a tinted BB cream, meaning that it contains skincare ingredients like jojoba oil, aloe vera, red algae, and these would be, um, you know, for hydrating, protecting the skin, antioxidants, also to provide, well, those ingredients wouldn't provide coverage, but also the product with the tint provides coverage and it primes for under your makeup. As a side note, it does contain coconut oil derivatives. I forgot to mention the scent. It is not scented. There's no fragrance added, but I smell something, and of course I don't care for it. It's very mild and it does dissipate. I think it's the pomegranate seed oil that I smell. So 
I don't think this is good for someone who is sensitive to scents or is sensitive to coconut oil. Maybe not for someone who's acne prone or oily skin because this does contain quite a bit, in, bit of oil. And also it would not work for someone with a deeper skin tone for the obvious reasons. I do think it's great for someone with normal to dry skin or dry skin. I use this as my skincare in the morning. I don't use any moisturizer or anything underneath it, except maybe sometimes my vitamin C serum. I think it's great for dry skin. It certainly moisturizes my skin. The texture is thicker than the other products, maybe a little moussey. It does spread out nicely. It's not slick or greasy at all. It has quite a long dry time though. For me, it never dries down all the way. It always remains a bit tacky. I often powder around my under eyes and nose. It dries down to a beautiful dewy finish. You can see the difference there, how much dewier it is than my, this hand does not have sunscreen, this hand does, and it's a much dewier finish. It doesn't have that weird chalky finish. It just looks like beautiful moisturized skin. I can wear this as a light coverage foundation. I can build it up somewhat to medium, especially if I use some powder. You know, it feels really nice. Also, this Integrity does play well with other products. I've never had a problem with it pilling or anything weird. I've worn it over skincare. I've worn it under lots of foundations. It really plays well with others. The only issue I've ever found is that if I put too much on because I want to use plenty of sunscreen, it can get cakey if I powder it, but I think that's a user issue as opposed to a product issue. I think that would happen with absolutely any product. Moving on to the second tinted SPF that I'm reviewing and the last SPF that I'm reviewing in this video. This is My Shell Dermaceuticals Sun Shield Liquid SPF. This is, as I said, tinted and it comes in three shades. It comes in an untinted version. This is the light medium, and then it comes in a deeper shade. I don't know the name of that one, but maybe it's called Dark. It's $24, is available at places like Whole Foods. Uh, My Shell also has a skincare line. You may be familiar with some of their other products. Did I say it's SPF 50, which is the highest of the SPFs we've talked about so far. It comes in a glass dropper and you've got to shake it. This one does have a ball in it that you can hear when you shake it. It's got the dropper system. I have found that it's starting to clump around the edges of the glass, maybe where it's dried some from being open. There is no fragrance. Now that being said, of course, I smelled something. It smells like ashes, maybe cigarette ashes or just you know, something like that. It's not a pleasant smell. Again, it dissipates as it dries down. The claims that it makes are that it's oil-free, completely oil-free, essential oil-free, all oils. It does contain bentonite clay. What that means is this is great for acne prone skin, oily skin, even that fungal acne that is rare, but some people have, this would be great. It's also great for sun sensitive skin types that are you know, oily or acne prone because it doesn't have any essential oil or anything to irritate it as far as I can tell. The person it's not good for is someone with dry skin. Even kind of me with my normal to dry skin, I found it's really quite drying. You definitely want to moisturize underneath. That being said, I'm curious to know how it does on dry skin or normal to dry skin in a humid environment. I live in a very dry climate and I'm thinking this could be really great on my trips to Florida to visit my family but I don't know. My only experience has been where I live in Colorado and it's very dry. As far as the texture goes, it is watery, much like the 11 serum, but it is a bit thicker. Now, I think because of the clay, this dries super fast. So it rubs around just fine, spreads fine. It sort of feels like water. And then you feel it drying under your hand and it almost, like you can feel the clay, it sort of feels like the 11, except the 11 then dries to a velvety finish. This one just dries down and almost feels like it's powder on your skin. You gotta work fast. And the finish is matte. This is the hand with this uh, my shell on it and this is the hand that does not have it on it it is completely matte I would suggest using something illuminating underneath it 
if you do want any sheen or you definitely got to go in with products that provide some dewiness, it can be opaque. It looks to me like an SPF that has been tinted, if you know what I mean. That mineral look, that chalky look. So I definitely like to go in over it and put on makeup, put on bronze, some blush, something to warm my face. That being said, it works, it can provide some great coverage. You can definitely use it as a foundation. It plays fine with everything I've used it with. For my final thoughts, my preference is for the Josh Rosebrook. It is more expensive, but it offers so much more than the 11, in my opinion. It offers all those antioxidant properties, the moisturization, as well as a finish that isn't velvety or doesn't leave any kind of texture on my skin or face. I don't think I mentioned it plays well with other products. I've worn it alone, on top of oils, underneath all kinds of foundations. It, it always behaves beautifully. It's lightweight, the ingredients are fabulous, and I just prefer that product. The 11 is expensive. It's temperamental under other products or over other products. I haven't even figured out which products they are. You have to shake it so if you forget, you know, you've kind of messed it up. You can't leave it in the heat. Also the packaging. Everyone I know of has complained about this dropper system that it doesn't really work and you just have to pour it into your hand. Now, as between the two tinted versions, I think it's pretty obvious, which I prefer. The Suntegrity is my preference. It's, again, less work. You don't have to shake it, whereas you do have to shake the My Shell. It is skincare. It really is moisturizing. It's got an SPF of 30, which is lower than the untinted versions and lower than the My Shell, but it's tried and true. It works for me. It looks great on my skin, really skin-like. I can build it up more for more coverage or not. It's just all I have to use. You know, I wash my face, I can throw that on and I'm out the door. There's no work involved and it plays with every product really well. The My Shell, again, is just not for me because of my normal to dry skin. It's great for someone else, but for me it's drying. The scent is off-putting as well. But, like I said, it might be great in a humid environment. Please comment and let us know in the comment section so we can learn from your experience if you've used any of these, what your thoughts are. If I didn't mention something that you're curious about, maybe I could answer that question for you. I hope you're wearing your sunscreen, whatever it may be. The best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you will wear. In the meantime, I hope you're finding time to pamper yourself today. Bye.